In the world of special operations, the Air Force PJs are highly regarded, often embedded with Navy SEALs and Army Green Berets. It takes two and a half years of training to become a PJ, and 80% of those who try wash out. They're qualified to administer narcotics in the form of painkiller lace lollipops. Here you go. You're going to be okay. Stick that in your mouth. In this case, our patient has a broken right leg and he can't walk. He runs the risk of slipping into shock. While my teammate splints the patient's leg, I struggle with the plastic transport sled called a Skedco. I'm completely fried, and I'm not sure if I can pull the pilot out of the woods. It requires gorilla strength, and I've got nothing left. The lead medic steps up to help while the rest of the squad runs security. Every special operations commando in the U.S. military must endure torturous training designed to make them quit. And now I know why. If you quit in combat, your teammates die. It's that simple. And it is the harsh reality these men train and operate under every day. I'm about to puke and I can no longer save the patient because I can barely save myself. But the assistant team leader provides a much needed shove of encouragement while the rest of the PJs pick up my slack. It takes my last remaining strength to heave the patient onto the helicopter, but we're not done yet. Once airborne, the treatment doesn't stop. It just becomes more advanced. I barely have the energy to cut through the pilot's flight suit, while our team leader has the manual dexterity and calm demeanor to start an IV. My head is swimming while we continue to assess the patient's vital signs. We increase the odds of survivability if we can get the patient to a trauma center in under an hour. We're on schedule, but I've been completely humbled by the experience. Training with the Air Force pararescue men has a way of doing that to a man. Sean Bergen, on the job.